Hi, I'm Dave Helmley, and today I want to take you through the incredible performance we're seeing with Premiere Pro CC running on the new Apple desktop powerhouse, the completely redesigned new Mac Pro. We're really excited about these new machines as are huge numbers of our customers who want to get the best possible performance out of the demanding ultra high resolution and heavy effects projects they're all working on. The examples I'm going to walk you through today will show you just how much you can actually do with Premiere Pro on the most powerful Mac ever shipped. This new Mac Pro is also inspiring a whole new set of Thunderbolt 2 devices to add to the excitement. Devices like these new 21 by 9 LG ultra monitors, which is the best way to display your footage. Other devices like expansion chassis from Magma and even portable small Thunderbolt 2 devices from LaCie. And let's not forget one of the drives that started it all, which was the promised Pegasus, now the Pegasus 2 at 32 terabytes. Since CS5, Premiere Pro has featured the Mercury playback engine designed to leverage all the computing power you can throw at it. It's always been optimized to be massively multi-threaded, taking advantage of all the systems the memory you can give it and making full use of today's modern GPUs for fast fluid performance. As with every release we work on, we're always looking to improve performance. And make no mistake, Premiere Pro CC loves this new Mac Pro, and I think you'll be very impressed to see what you can do when you use the two together. Let's start by looking at this complex sequence. All of the effects on the new Mac Pro are using OpenCL running on the first GPU in the system. Later in the demo, I'll show you how you can leverage the power of multiple GPUs for exporting. So for now, I want to show you how you can interact with your content while you're editing. I'll start by playing the timeline, jumping over to my project bin, grabbing an adjustment layer, and stretching it across all the way to the end of that sequence. You want to keep your eye on the green dot here, which is our drop frame indicator, and you'll also notice that I'm at full resolution. Jumping back over to the effects, I'm going to select the adjustment layer, double click on crop, and then I'll just bring this in by about 10 on the top and maybe 10 on the bottom. And I'll type in a couple of other effects, maybe something like a, uh, a CP effect called Back in the Day, which is a speed grade lumetry effect. So that looks great. And maybe I'll just tilt this a little bit by using a basic 3D. I'll apply that, maybe bring it in by 35 or so. And you'll see all of this has been happening. I'm not dropping frames. I'm getting great interactivity, full resolution. Everything just looks fantastic. Even on my external display, it looks awesome. So you'll also notice one of the great things about the new Mac Pro, I'm able to get in here and just scrub all this very, very fluid. Whether you're using your internal drive for smaller projects or your external drives uh, like the Pegasus drive for larger projects, this new Mac Pro really, really does fly. And it's a great experience. Another thing I might try to do at this point is just add something like, uh, I don't know, a rolling title. I'll drag some of this out, hit play. And it plays back beautifully, exactly like I would have expected. So as you can see, adding effects, interacting with your content is really, really easy with Premiere Pro CC and the new Mac Pro. I think we can all agree that RAW and 4K workflows are becoming more and more the norm and that there always seems to be another new high resolution camera coming on the market. As many of you know, Premiere Pro offers deep native support for all of these cameras, meaning you can go straight from the NLE without the need to transcode, keeping all of your media in its fresh, pristine, off the sensor condition. Now let's take a quick look at this timeline. Here I'm mixing Sony RAW, Panasonic GH4, Canon 1DC, Sony XAVC, and Apple ProRes all at 4K and everything plays back perfectly at full 4K resolution without dropping any frames. And I do mean full resolution. There's no downsizing happening on the timeline. Even on my external 4K display in these new ultra-wide LG Thunderbolt 2 displays, the new Mac Pro and Premiere Pro are a perfect match and it really makes editing 4K a lot easier than I think a lot of us thought it would would be. This new hardware is really amazing. Let's go ahead and add a 4K adjustment layer to this sequence. Add it to the timeline. Let's throw it up on video track 2.
My adjustment layer is already selected. Jump over to Effects. I'll double click on a three-way color corrector and then I'll start to make some adjustments. Give that a little bit of life. And you can see it plays back flawlessly. This ability to allow you to interact with your 4K media, play with your effects, make those adjustments, really makes it easy to get used to working this way. As you may recall, I talked about using dual GPUs when we render the timeline or when we export. Let's see how that works. I'll jump up to File, Export, Media. And I've already got an Apple ProRes 4K 3840 timeline at 23976 set up. That's what I want to export at. And I'm going to go ahead and queue this and send this over to the media encoder and show you where these dual GPUs really pay off. Now you can see I'm all queued up. I'm just going to hit the play button to start the processing and you'll be amazed at how fast this is. This is a fairly short timeline, only about 15 seconds for the demo just to keep it quick. And it's going to be pretty close to real time. So with a 15 second timeline in this particular case, you'll see it'll finish in just about 15 seconds. Absolutely amazing. One question I get all the time is in regards to dual GPU versus single GPU. And I'll tell you right off the bat, we're about twice as fast when you have dual GPU. Certainly in this new Mac Pro, it's really easy to see when you have multiple GPUs what it can do. Now one easy test that you can do to show multi-GPU versus software only mode is just to go to the renderer in Adobe Media Encoder, set it to software only mode, Let's go ahead and select that same media that I had. I'll hit Command D to duplicate that. And I'll start that processing. And you'll get a real quick sense as you watch that progress bar. You know, we're already at five seconds and it's really not very far along. Even at 10 seconds, it's not very far along. And you'll get a real sense of why Adobe has spent years developing its 64-bit platform for memory management and GPU and CPU processing. It is absolutely imperative the way that these new workflows work, especially 4K and higher resolutions, that you have a well-balanced, optimized system. And there's no question that we are at state-of-the-art with 4K editing today, and this new Mac Pro really makes it easy. Again, look, we're at 42 seconds and it's not even halfway through the project yet. So I'll go ahead and let this fast forward a minute, and then we'll go ahead and see what it finishes at. And as you see, it's wrapping up. It's down to about its last 10 seconds. And you can see from the 15 seconds with the dual GPU, it's now at about 2 minutes and 31 seconds before it completed the render. Absolutely amazing difference. And again, this is why you want to put your money in a well-balanced system. And no question, having dual GPUs is highly recommended. Now let's talk multicam. Here's a 4K multicam sequence that I can easily play all of these new angles on the Mac Pro. I'll just go ahead and put this in multicam mode. I'll set my cameras down to 1 8th, hit play, and just edit as needed. You'll see I'm not dropping frames, the motion's very fluid, and it really works fantastic on this new Mac Pro. I can take this out of multicam mode, put that back up to full resolution, wind this back, and preview it on my external display. It really looks fantastic. Again, I never thought I'd be able to edit full 4K multicam so easily. And finally, I'd like to talk about RED. Adobe and RED have had an extremely close relationship for a long time, and as many of you know, all RED media is supported natively in Premiere Pro, even with RED source settings available directly within the UI. Now, in order to play back RED media at the highest possible quality with no reduction in full quality that was captured by the RED sensor, historically you've needed a device like a RED Rocket in order to play back full 4K. Well, today I'm really excited to give you a technology preview of something our engineers have been working on for quite a while, where we can use supported GPUs to manage the debayering of RED media. What does this mean? It means that you can now play back in real time every single pixel of 4K media without dropping a single frame. 
And even more amazing, I'll go ahead and apply a green screen to this particular clip here. While it's playing, I'll jump over to Effects, double click on my Ultra Key setting. Let's go ahead and pick out some green. That looks pretty good. I'll set the output to Alpha Channel. Let's put an aggressive uh, setting on that. You can even start to adjust some of the settings on there. Maybe uh, take the highlights up or down, put that back in a composite, and you can see I'm playing all this back at full quality with no drop frames. Absolutely amazing, even on my external display. Now at this point, I can go ahead and pick out a graphic here, drag this on here, I'll wind this back, and hit play again, and you can see it looks absolutely fantastic. It's not dropping frames, you've got two layers going on there, full quality, absolutely amazing. This really shows off the power of Premiere Pro running on the new Mac Pro. Absolutely incredible. To wrap up this demo, as you can see, the new Mac Pro is really a phenomenal machine. And Premiere Pro is the perfect video editing application to partner with it. You can expect best-in-class performance, incredible fast exporting, and the ability to play back multiple native formats smoothly and at the highest possible quality. So keep watching your Creative Cloud application for new updates, and you'll see what's next.